Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. This is Chapter 5, Section 5.1, called Distance. The notion of distance. This is um, some of the most fundamental things having to do with geometry. So we're going to cover some uh, assumptions without proof. And the first assumption we're going to have is called dist1 in the book. And dist1 says that for any points p and q, If I could write properly, you'd see that that's a P and that's a Q. Uh, we, there exists a distance PQ, we write D PQ, that's greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so distance can't be negative, but it can be zero and it can be positive. In fact, we assume that if distance of P and Q is equal to zero, then P and Q must be the same points, P equals Q. That's what P equals Q means, that P is the same point as Q. So graphically or geometrically, using pictures and drawings, what this means is that if you have two points P and Q, there is some distance between those points. That's the distance D, okay? But if P and Q are the same point, the distance between them is zero. Pretty simple stuff. Um, fundamental, useful, we're gonna be using it in proofs and stuff, but it's very basic, very simple. The second, assumption we're going to make is called dist2. And this one says that for any points P and Q, uh, the distance from P to Q is the same as a distance from Q to P. This should be relatively obvious. It doesn't matter which direction you're traveling on the plane. It takes the same amount of time or distance to get to where you want to go. And the last one he calls dist3, uh, popularly known as the triangle inequality. And I see this pop up every once in a while in advanced mathematics and advanced physics. Um, what this says is the distance between two points P and M, well, P, Q, M, B points. Okay, so P, Q, and M are points. The distance between points P, Q, and M is less than or equal to the distance from point P to some other point Q, adding the distance from point Q to the point M. And what this looks like is if we add another point here, uh, M, okay, then the distance from P to M is shorter than going from P to Q and then Q to M. That's all it says. Unless, of course, you have P, Q, and M, in a line, in which case the distance from P to Q plus the distance from Q to M is exactly equal to the distance from P to M. And we'll talk about that now. We'll do it by introducing something called a segment. In geometry, we have lots of things and they each have a unique and meaningful name. So segment, whenever you see segment, this is what a segment is. So a segment, if we take two points P and Q, let's put Q, I don't know, over here, okay? Then there exists a unique line between points P and Q, as long as P is not Q, right? Let me just use this little scale here, and then we'll draw, oh, let's use red, actually. I don't wanna use black. Black is for the segment. There is only one line that travels through both of those points. And the segment is the section, or the, the part of that line that goes between points P and point Q, okay? So this is the segment PQ, okay? There's a couple of facts, assumptions about segments we're gonna assume here. The first one we're gonna call seg one. It says let P, Q, and M be points. The distance from P to M is equal to the distance from P to Q and the sum, of, uh, the sum of the distance between P to Q and from Q to M if and only if Q lies on the segment PM, okay? So this is saying basically that when you have three points in a line, P, Q, M, 
and that point in the middle is between P and M because it's on the segment, then the distance between P to Q and the distance from Q to M is the same as the distance from P to M. That's all it's saying. There's a second fact. This one's a little bit more complicated to understand. Once you get it though, it's not that hard. Seg two, it says let P and M be points in the plane. What's a plane? That's like this flat shirt, this two dimensional flat sheet of paper where you can go up, down, left, right, but you can't like leave the page. You can't go vertical or horizontal, or you can't go vertical or descend to vertical. Uh, so then we say if C, or we have the distance D, we say D is equal to the distance between P and M, okay? And we say C is equal to zero, equal to D or between zero and D, then there exists a unique, and unique is an important word in mathematics. It means there's only one, there can't be any other point Q such that um, Q is on the segment PM and the distance from P to Q is equal to C, okay? A lot of words, it's really a simple concept, okay? So what we're saying here is we have two points, P and, P and M. So let's draw, let's draw a line. We have a points P and we have points M. And the line segment is the points between here, right? If we choose any point between P and M, including P and M itself, right? Let's call that Q. So Q is some point on that line segment. Then the distance between P and M, which we call D, and the distance from P to Q, which we call C. C must be zero, it can be D, or it can be between zero and D. And conversely, if you choose any distance between zero and D, including zero and D obviously, you will find a unique point. Okay, so there's as many unique points between P and M as there are numbers between zero and D. That's what this is saying. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool conclusion. All right, last thing we wanna talk about with distance is having to do with circles. Circles and distances are fundamentally tied together. Okay, what is a circle? You guys know what a circle is, but we'll tell you a circle with a formal mathematical definition here. A circle is all points that are a distance are from the center point P, okay? And graphically what that looks like is we have a point P and then we have some distance, I messed that up, R, and there's a point that's a distance from that point P. And there's another point that maps out, there's all these points that are the distance R and I'm terrible at drawing circles. That's the circle, okay? A disc, on the other hand, and sometimes people confuse discs and circles. Even textbooks will sometimes do that. This is all points that are a distance um, greater than zero. Uh, they are greater than or equal to zero. Uh, zero or less than and less than or equal to R from center point P. Okay, I don't really need to say zero because that R less than or equal R because the reason why we don't have to say greater than or equal to zero because distance is always greater than or equal to zero, okay? So any point that is within, so we have point P, we have some distance R, all the points on the inside, including the edge, what we call the circle, and including the center, that is the disc. Okay, so the circle is just the ring around the edge, and the disc is the edge, the center, and everything in between. Last little note, uh, remark here. Um, we, in mathematics, we're not going to worry about units. Like, when I say one distance, 
I'm not saying like one inch or one meter. It can be whatever you want it to be, right? So if on this scale, for instance, if you can look closely, I don't know how well you can see. Here we have a measure that's one, that's one inch, okay? On the other side, we have a measure down here of millimeters. One would be one of those tiny little intervals, right? So the distance one could be this, it could be a millimeter, it could be something else. It could be miles, it could be meters, it could be anything else like that. So we're not gonna worry about units. In physics, we do worry about units. But we will say that whatever unit you choose, when you do the area, which the area is distance times distance, you're going to have that unit squared. So inches squared or feet squared or something like that. That's about the only thing you need to worry about. So choose a unit, don't choose a unit, whatever you wanna do. Um, there is a unit that you're using for numbers, some basic distance from zero to one. And uh, it can be whatever you want. We're not gonna worry about that in math. When you get to physics, we will worry about it. All right, guys, take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. This video is part of my series on Sergey Lane's basic mathematics. You can click here to watch the rest of the videos in the playlist. You can click here to learn more about me, and you can click here to support my channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.